Have you made it to three or four stars on your island, but now you're stuck? Does Isabel keep telling you to plant more flowers, so you plant more flowers, and you still can't seem to figure it out? In this video, I'm going to show you the three-step process for getting a five-star island, and we're getting started right now. So, we've all been stuck in the infinite Isabel loop, right? We get a three-star island rating, and we're like, okay, now we can terraform, so flatten the entire island. <laughs> but after about three minutes of this, you determine it's too much work, and now your thumb hurts, so maybe it's time for a snicky snack. And then while you're eating your snicky snack, you tell yourself, God, I'm stuck with a stupid clown and a stupid chicken, so I guess the least I can do is decorate the place, right? Wrong. Because Isabel is such a nice person, she's too afraid to tell you what exactly you need to do. She hints around with words like, lacks appealing scenery, which is kind of like when a girl flirts and flirts and drops the infamous, you're such a good friend. Aww. Hey guys, what's up? It's Phil, and welcome back to the channel where I help you play amazing games. If you're new here, then be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my weekly uploads. Be sure to hit the like button if this video is helpful, and I really appreciate the support. Speaking of support, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Bravo Studio, and their Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch accessories. Bravo Studio has a ton of great Animal Crossing themed products for your Nintendo Switch, including carrying cases and tote bags, and they're all made with high quality materials. They sent me one of their carrying cases and the quality and functionality is spot on. It's by far the best Animal Crossing Switch accessories for the money and has a ton of 5 star customer reviews. Click the link below that will automatically add a 10% discount to your Amazon cart and get yourself hooked up with this sweet deal. But you need to hurry because this 10% discount is only valid for the next month. Okay, so before I start barreling into all of these factual statements, I want to be sure that you know all this information is coming from the Animal Crossing New Horizons official companion guide and the data mining community. Thanks guys. And lastly, a lot of testing on my part. So how do you get your island from a 3 or 4 star island rating to the max of 5 stars? Well, it's easy. You just have to have at least a total of 665 development points and at least 450 scenery or nature points. Isabel will judge your island based on these two categories, the development category of your island and the scenery or the nature aspect of your island. And your star rating comes from whichever category has the lowest points. Mostly you'll get your development points for things like the buildings, the bridges, and the inclines, how many villagers you have, and how many weeds are on your island, but also the fencing and the non-DIY furniture pieces that are placed throughout your island. You know how Isabel keeps saying that your island lacks appealing scenery and that you should decorate the island from head to toe? Well, if you read on a little bit further, she'll tell you if you need to improve the development category or not. You'll need a total of 665 development points and we'll discuss how to max that out in the upcoming section. So the scenery category is probably what you expected it to be, which are things like flowers, the trees, bamboo, and bushes, but it also includes DIY furniture. Each fully grown tree and fully grown flower counts as a single point in the scenery category. And you'll need a total of 450 points in this category. Now, you can only get a max of about 190 points for trees, bamboo, and bushes, and then we'll start to see a negative impact. And as a matter of fact, if you get more than 220 points combined for the trees and bushes, then Isabel will actually tell you to remove some of them, and the game puts a barrier so that you can't get more than a 4 star island rating. But the flowers are a bit different, and you can have as many as you want without a penalty, which becomes a super valuable piece of knowledge. Now before we dive into the three step process, let's discuss what can negatively impact your star rating. And these things are super important because if you still follow the three step process, and still have these negative things happening on your island, then the process becomes a bit worthless. So having more than 100 weeds will cause a negative impact on your island. And I've seen a lot of debate here, but according to both the companion guide and the data mining community, there is a negative impact, but it just won't happen until you have at least 100 weeds on your island. Having 15 or more dropped items on the ground will cause you to be capped at 4 stars on the development category. If you have more than 45 items placed within an 8x8 square, then you'll be stuck at 4 stars for the development category. Placing 6 of the exact same item in an 8x8 square will also cause you to be penalized on your development points, so be sure to keep a variety and have fun with it. 
Although I do want to mention that some of the dropped items will not cause a penalty, such as tree branches, stones, seashells, star fragments, and some of the other naturally occurring things. Also, if you have a table and you put things on top of the table, such as Nook Mile tickets or bells or any of those other items, then it won't cause any sort of penalty. Now for the three-step process for getting a five-star island rating. Now one thing I do want to say here is that everyone's island is going to be different and everyone is going to want to decorate and design a little bit differently. Some things are required and some things are recommended because they're easier. So I'm going to leave some options and a lot of wiggle room in each step so that it will give you more of a guidance rather than specific instructions so that you can have some flexibility and really just have fun with the game. Now step number one is to develop your island. The first step in the process is to make sure that you have all of your buildings and shops placed and upgraded. So that means your resident services building has been upgraded, Nook's Cranny has also been upgraded, the Able Sister shop is built, and the museum is built. What is not required, but an easy thing to do, is that you have to have a max of 10 villagers living on your island, and the max of 8 bridges and 8 inclines built on your island. So if you add all the points for all of those things that I just mentioned, you'll have a total of 345 development points. And since you have to have 665 total, that leaves about 320 more points for the development category that we've got to find. Now again, I'm not saying that you have to max out your bridges and inclines, or even max out the villagers, but you do get an additional 15 points for every bridge or incline, and you get an extra 15 points for 9 villagers, and an extra 30 points for 10 villagers. So even though you don't have to do this, it does add a lot of extra points, and so that's why I'm recommending it. Of course, if you decide not to max out your bridges, inclines, and villagers, then you'd need to put down lots of extra furniture to make up the points. Which kind of segues into the next step. Now we need to find a way to get 320 development points. And placing down furniture is one of the best ways to do this. You'll get a single point for placing down just about anything on your island, but you do get some bonus points if it's classified as an outdoor furniture item, if the furniture item is three spaces or more in size, if it's more than 2,000 bells, and if it's more than 20,000 bells. And on top of all of that, all of these things can be combined together, kind of like how that crazy coupon lady does at the grocery store. You know she's stacking those coupons and walking out of there for like 350. Now let me give you an example. This bass guitar is a small item and it's worth over 20,000 bells. So that means I'll get a single point for placing it down and then I'll get a point for it being more than 2,000 bells and then I'll get an additional bonus point for it being over 20,000 bells. So this guitar ends up giving me three total points in the development category. Now if it's a large item that covers three spaces and it's over 20,000 bells, you'd get a point for placing it down, you get three bonus points for it being a large item, and a point for it being more than 2,000 bells, and then another point for it being more than 20,000 bells, and that equals six total points. But wait, there's more! You can also get an extra half bonus point if the item is classified as an outdoor furniture piece. So you can quickly see what we need to do here. If you want to add development points quickly, you should focus on large and expensive items, or at least expensive items. Now since Isabel only gives subtle hints, you'll need to speak with her frequently to check on your island eval, just to make sure you're still lacking in the development category. She will say things like, lacks appealing scenery, which can be confusing, but if you read a little bit further, she'll tell you if you need points in the development category or not. She might say things like, buy furniture from Nookstop to decorate with, alluding to the development category. And I did confirm this with my testing, Isabel told me I was lacking appealing scenery and needed to place some more furniture that I could purchase from the Nookstop, and after I did that, she complimented me on it, and that let me know that I was going in the right direction. So when this happens, keep improving your island with furniture, and then keep checking back with Isabel to see what to do next. Now I do want to make some recommendations here, but it's not necessarily written in stone that you must do it this way, but I do feel like it's very practical and simple things that you can do, and that's why I'm suggesting it. What I like to do here is to build a yard for every villager's house. Place a fence around it so you get some points there, and then place a little scene with various non-DIY furniture items. Also, placing fencing around the buildings and building other little scenes on the beach and other areas around your island really helped me, and it's helped others so it might help you too. Just be sure to keep a variety of items in each area and have fun with it. 
Now if you combine step 1 and step 2, you should be in the range for hitting your 665 mark on the development category. So just keep checking back with Isabel until she starts to suggest that you need to plant some more flowers and trees, or items that you've crafted such as the DIY items, or anything else related to the nature category. Then you'll know you need to decorate the island with the items that we're about to talk about in the next section. Now the scenery category is exactly what it sounds like. You'll get a single point for every fully grown tree, bamboo, and flower. You'll also get a half point for every bush that you plant. You do get some points for having flowers not fully grown, but it's less than a point and not really worth talking about. Now DIY Furniture has an interesting twist. It actually gives you points for both the development and the scenery categories. You'll get the same amount of points in the development category for the DIY Furniture that we just talked about because you're simply placing something down on your island. But for the scenery points, if it's a small DIY furniture item, you'll get a quarter of a scenery point. And if it's a larger DIY item, then you'll get a full scenery point. Now for the scenery category, Isabel might say something like decorate with items you've created or allude to something related to nature like plant more trees or flowers. Now you'll need to get a total of 450 points in this category to have a 5 star island rating, so here's what I'm recommending. But it's going to be a little harder to make the recommendation for the scenery because everyone is different, and I personally don't like a lot of trees on my island and would rather have more flowers, and I think you get the point. So here's some practical recommendations. Now since you can't have more than 190 points for trees, bamboo, and bushes, I'd recommend having at least 100 of these on your island, and the closer that you can get to 190, the better. Okay, now with the flowers, there is a Nook Miles task called Flower Power, and this task will actually track how many flowers you've planted up to 300. So I definitely recommend going after this Nook Miles task because not only do you get the Nook Miles, but it also tracks how many flowers you're planting, and then as you plant each flower, you're getting a point. And planting flowers is a super inexpensive way to boost your island star rating. There are lots of options with DIY furniture that you can use to place throughout your island for additional points, and it's really a nice way to fill in the gaps. So if you had a total of 100 trees and bamboo, that gives you a right around 100 points. And then, if you fill your island with 300 flowers, that puts you up to about 400 points. And I'm going to go back to my previous recommendation here and suggest that you build little scenes at each of your villagers' houses, or scenes throughout your island, and then place some of these DIY furniture items to get the points, but also to make things look good and really just to have fun. So there's a couple things that we can do. We can add more trees, we can add more flowers, or we can add more DIY items. And as you can imagine, adding trees, bamboo, and flowers will be the easiest way to increase your island star rating since it gives you a full point for each. So keep adding flowers and keep checking back with Isabel to see how things are going. Now even though Isabel is super vague on telling you what to do next, it's still one of the best ways to know which area you need to focus on. If she says things like decorating with items you have crafted or anything related to nature, then you know to decorate with flowers, trees, and DIY items. If it's anything else, you'll want to decorate the item with large and expensive furniture. Now the video on the top left shows the best ways to time travel and the video on the bottom left shows you the fastest way to get rid of villagers on your island. Click on one of those videos to learn more. And if you're new here, then don't forget to click the round icon to subscribe and check out my other videos.